friends, welcome to TFI in one of the most unproductive videos that I'll ever do on the channel, but I don't care because I loves me some mocha. I loves me some mocha. This is utterly pointless, but it looks cool as fonzy, man. It looks really cool. It's one of those things that's nice to know about. It's nice to be able to do. It's nice to have it in your back pocket, and you never know when it's going to come in handy. It's just one of those things that's nice to know you can do it and what you can make of it in the future. So let's have a look at what we can do. The model on screen doesn't matter, right? I've got my MSI GTX 970 graphics card, but you can have anything you want. This does not matter. It's what's happening in the background that matters. I'm working in an assembly. You can work in anything you want, but I'm working in an assembly. Get anything up and then follow from this point if you want, or you can just watch me create some bokeh, because I love me some bokeh. Right. So I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to prep the environment first, right? So I'm going to prep the environment. So I'm going to go to view and then I'm going to set the visual style over to realistic and that's going to change all the textures to the realistic textures. And then we're going to turn on shadows. So just make sure all the shadows are turned on. That's going to turn on all the ground, all the ambient shadows and the object shadows. That starts to look a little bit better. And then for the environment, I'm going to change this to, let's go for photo booth. So we'll go for photo booth and that turns everything white. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is the prep for the boga balls. And just, if you're wondering what the hell are boga balls, right, I was going to show some boga on screen now, because you might be thinking, I've kind of heard of it, but I don't know what it is. But it's that funky kind of popping in the background. It's when, like, a, a light or a light source is blown out, blurred into the background of photography, and it turns into this huge ball of light. And it just looks nice, creamy, crispy, and delicious. Everyone loves a bit of boga. It makes, you, it makes your photos stand out and really shine. And that, it doesn't, you don't need it. It just, it's just nice. I just, I just like it. I, I like it. And I wanted to do it in Inventor. So here we go. Right. So I'm going to create the objects that are going to create the bokeh. So I'm going to select create a part. And I'm going to say this component is going to be called bokeh. And because it doesn't exist, I'm going to set it as reference. Hit OK. And then drop that part anywhere in here. And then I'm going to cro uh, crot. So <laughs> I'm going to start a new sketch and drag the sketch plane kind of off into the background. So the discs are gonna be off into the background. How far back doesn't matter as long as you can see them. And then uh, we're just gonna draw some circles. The circles are gonna represent the bokeh and you need to make sure that you draw the circles so that the, when, you, when we do our render, which I'm using Inventor Studio, you wanna make sure you can actually see the bokeh discs. That, that is gonna help somewhat. <laughs> it is. Right, the size of the circles doesn't matter at this point. You can always come back and change these later on if you want. But they need, to be, they need to be big enough so that a light source can hit them. So that, that's probably about as much as, as we need to know at this point. Let's draw, let's create one more down there. Okay, finish that sketch. And then I'm going to extrude all of these into little disks that are 0 0.1 in size. And then we need to apply a texture to them. I'm going to turn off that work plane for now, actually, because uh, that's hideous. So we're going to go into the appearance editor. And I'm going to scroll down the Autodesk Appearance Library. So I'm not using the Inventor Material Library. We're using the Autodesk Appearance Library. And I'm going to grab Glazing, this one here. Right, we're going to add that to the Document Materials. Right-click on Glazing and edit that. And then, for the color, although it's clear, it's not quite, well, it kind of is, but it's, it's got like a kind of bluey tint to it, which is no good. So we're going to change that to Custom. And then for the Custom Color, we're going to go a white, so it blends in with a white background. The reflectance and the sheets of glass at this point, I don't think they make much of a difference. You can experiment with all these things later on, but right now I, I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I, I'm think this is. I'm thinking this is going to be enough, right? So we're going to say this material is going to be called Boca Shears. That'll do. Right, apply. And then uh, that'll do. Close that down, and we're going to select from the materials or the appearances. We're going to select uh, bogishes, and that should set all our discs to that whitey color. And we can still see them, but when we do a render, they're going to fade into the background, and you're not going to see them. So it's fine. It's fine. Just bear with me. Bear with me for now. Right. Hit return, and we're going to now ignore that message as well because of my uh, dodgy modeling and errors that I need to fix. We're now going to jump into Invent Studio. Going to jump into Inventor Studio. We're going to make shit happen. So Inventor Studio, and um, I've got a couple of preset cameras in here, which I'm going to delete. I've been using them for other other jobs, so I'm going to get rid of the ca the cameras that I've already got in the scene. Yes, go away. Don't want you. 
and uh, I think I think I think that's it right so I'm going to select select orthographic for the view just so I can get the camera in around about the right spot if you've got any lights already in your scene just get rid of them all just to make sure we're starting from absolute fresh so get rid of all your lights and you should have no cameras and no local lights and no lighting style lights okay we're pretty much at the start now select the render tab and this is the Inventor Studio rendering panel. And then I'm going to go to Studio Lighting Styles and just make sure Photo Booth is active. That's got the little asterisk next to it. For the environment, now if you want to, you can change the exposure here. I've got mine set to 0 0.64. But honestly, I've, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again and again and again. Everything in Inventor Studio is trial and error. There is no correct settings for Inventor Studio None of the settings mean anything. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Exposure, 0 0.64. Well, 0 0.64 what, sir? Exactly. 0 0.64 what? It's just a slide bar. It doesn't mean anything. So it's all trial and error. But you want to make sure you select display scene image, and that puts the white photo booth background onto the uh, onto the scene that we're going to use for rendering. So you want to make sure you've got the select uh, display scene image selected, and then hit done. Okay. We're now going to create a couple of local lights that we're going to shine against these discs. The purpose of that will become apparent in just a short second. So we're going to select local lights and then we're going to select the target for the first one is going to be the center of that disc. Click the center of the disc and then pull the cursor away, which is the, the actual location of the light source. And you just want to make sure that it's just close enough to the disc about there. And then we're going to go to the illumination settings and we're going to crank intensity all the way to the top and attenuation compensation all the way to the top. Right. Couple of things to point out at this point. You probably, if you're thinking, oh, I, want, I, want to, I want to do this. I need, I need to do this. I can make this red and blue and purple and all kinds of shiny bokeh ball colors. Because the nature of Inventor, right, it's not a, it's not a professional rendering package. When you crank attenuation compensation and intensity up on these lights, the light hits the disc and it just scatters everywhere, including the ground and your model. And you can't make that not happen. There's no way you can exclude objects from being exposed to these light sources. So if you do change this light to be a different color, you're going to get that color bleeding all the way through your model. You might want that. I don't. I just, I'm just going to keep this as white. And you can experiment with the attenuation compensation. This is how far the light does bleed past the the, uh, the the target point. You can see it's sort of hitting there, and then it'll scatter across the ground. Your mileage is going to vary. Your mileage is going to vary. Just just try and error it. Trial and error it. And then, okay, on that light source. Right, and then what we're going to do is just repeat the process on all the other discs. So target the middle of the disc, pull the light source away, place it, crank up the intensity and then crank up the attenuation compensation and you can start to see it's bleeding across the model down here which kind of looks quite cool but when we do the final render it's going to be quite bright but I'd rather have a bright white light than a bright blue green or whatever other color of of, of light you go for one of the first practice attempts I had at doing this I chose a different color for every single disc so I had green and blues and purples and yellows and it just looked ridiculous. I had this kind of rainbow effect on the floor and around the model, and it just looked silly. And there was no way, like I said just before, you can't exclude the ground from having light cast on it, and you can't exclude the light from hitting the model, which you can do in other professional rendering applications. You can say exclude this part from receiving light from this particular light source, but it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. You just gotta you gotta make with what you've got, which is uh, what she said. Right, okay, on those, so that's a light source now on each and every disc, and I'm going to hit save on that because Inventor loves to crash. In Inventor Studio, Inventor does, loves to crash. So we're going to make sure that's all done. And then the next thing we're going to do is the is another really important step, and that is set up a camera. So we're going to change the view back to perspective, and then just navigate so you can see the discs in the background behind your model, and I'm going to press F4, and then... I'm going to set the pivot point around this, just the, the the close one of the closest points on the model, and that just makes sure that the camera isn't looking too ridiculous. So our pivot point is actually at the front. 
I just prefer it that way. It's one of those things. And then we're going to right click on cameras in the browser and then select create camera from view. So that creates camera one. Right click on camera one and then select edit. Click link to view. And then you just want to, this is where you finalize where the camera is going to be. So this is the camera that you're looking through that the render is going to be from. So when we create the final render, it is going to be through looking through this camera. So just make sure you've got it approximately, I don't know, maybe about there. So the, the graphics card or your objects sent the screen and the disks, what you or what you'd think would be visible in shot. If they're not, we're going to check that in a bit just to make sure that they are. The next really important thing here is depth of field. You want to tick enable for depth of field. If you're not familiar with photography, depth of field is the effect of blowing out the background blurring everything in the distance and keeping something in focus in the foreground it's I might if I've got something I'll show a picture right now of what depth of field looks like you've got your your target your source in focus and then the background or the foreground is completely blown out that's depth of field so that makes photographs look really nice and especially for computer generated imagery it makes things look more realistic than they should do so we're going to take that and then we're going to select focus limits and then choose f-stop the f-stop, again, is based around photography. It's a photography term. It's the aperture size, and it means nothing here. In Inventor, it means nothing because we don't know what camera we're supposed to be simulating here or what kind of lens we're simulating here. So it's entirely trial and error. But normally, if you want a good in photography, if you want a really good depth of field, you, s you select something around about and less than 2.5. Between 2.5 and 3, anything less than that, and you've got good depth of field. But it's, it gets trial and error. It is absolute trial and error. So f-stop, I'm going to choose an f-stop value of, I would, I'm going to say 1.5. I mean, on my camera, which I use a, a Sigma lens, a Panasonic G7, and a, a Metabone Speed Booster, I usually get an f-stop of about 1.1 for product photography, and that looks absolutely beautiful. But that's not the gear that I'm using here, so it doesn't mean anything. Right, the focus plane, this is where you want the camera to focus in on. What you want to be sharp and everything beyond that will be blurry. So I'm going to select this arrow here and I'm going to pick approximately this region here. So I want this area here to be in focus and I want everything beyond that to be blurry. So that should set your focus plane to be the distance between the camera and that point there, which you just wouldn't know what that was at this point. You wouldn't know. So you've, you just selected based on objects and then inventor tells you what the distance is and you're like hey great story bro tell me it again and then click okay and that's the camera created once the camera is created we need to verify that the camera's actually got everything in shot so we're going to right click on camera again and then select edit and this black area here is what you're actually going to see this is what is in the shot so fortunately actually everything is in shot for me here i'm going to just drag I'm gonna hold the left mouse button down and drag it just a bit further so the all the bokeh discs are in are in shot but that's pretty good this other square in here this green and blue square that you see in here this is the that's the target focus area the blue plane that's what the camera is actually focusing on that's the target focus plane everything on that plane will be in focus and the second green plane this one here is the limits of the focus. That's kind of how inventors calculate this. Everything between the blue square and the green square is in focus. Everything beyond that is going to be completely blown out of focus and looking delicious. It's going to be looking professional. So we're going to click OK on that. And then we're going to say, I think we're done. And we're going to go for a render. Now, now, I can't do a render live. I just can't. I can't do a render live. When I, I, this is the second time I've recorded the video. The first time I did that, my screen capture software completely shit its pants because ray tracing is all cores on your CPU going balls to the wall. And my, my, my entire video up to that point completely died and failed on me, so I've had to record it again. So instead, what I'm going to do is show you how to set up the render, and then I'm going to essentially end the video, and I'm just going to show you at the end of the video what it looks like. Right, so we're going to go to render image, and for render image settings, 
you want to select the resolution. Now, if you've set up the camera on a monitor that's using 1920 by 1080 resolution, it's probably a safe bet to go with that resolution 1920 by 1080. Just put that in there. For the camera, I'm going to select camera one and it should shift your view to look through the camera. And then this white box here is confirmation of what is going to be in the image and it sort of gets cropped off here. You can't see it further past here as well. The colors are blending together. The lighting style, we're going to go for photo booth. We did specify that earlier on. For the output, you want to leave that blank. And the renderer, you want to select until satisfactory. That means it's just going to continuously keep cleaning up the, the render until you're happy with it. For lighting and material accuracy, we're going to select high, which is the best quality settings. And then for image filtering, anti-aliasing, I'm still not convinced this actually does anything. <laughs> I'm pretty con I'm, I'm actually pretty convinced this doesn't do anything. If it does, it's minimal, but it's supposed to be the anti-aliasing of the final render, but I've yet to find something that looks bad. So I'm going to go back to general and then I'm going to hit render and I'll show you the final results in post-processing. I'm going to knock, on, knock this on the head here. And uh, it's, it's a shame because I want to talk about it. I want to talk. I'm so excited with this stuff. Man. It looks so good. Right. I'm going to start showing it now. In fact, screw it. I'm going to start showing it now in editing. And I'm going to pretend like I'm watching it with you right now. And look at the... Oh, my God. Look at the balls appearing in... Ladies. <laughs> look at those balls appearing in the background. It's so creamy and delicious. Oh, my God. It's so professional. I, I, I'm wasted in talent here. I should be a photographer. This looks so beautiful. Look at those balls. It, but it does, though. Look at it, man. Look at it. It is so nice. So look at the... Look at the depth of field that you've got on the on the graphics card. Past the focal point, everything is just completely blown out. And then in the distance, you've got the light source hitting against those discs, causing that big, huge, round bokeh ball effect. It just looks amazing. It is completely optional and completely arguably pointless as well, but it can make your picture kind of stand out. And if you want to, if you want to put a bit of color on it, you can do. But just bear in mind that that color will bleed across the rest of the model just because of the way of the way it is. But you can maybe then try experimenting with a spotlight instead of the uh, the point light that we've used for shining against the discs. Just give it a shot. Now you now that you know how to do this, give it a shot. Give it a shot. What you can also try as well, and I'll I might be able to just again add this in in post processing. If you lower the f stop, so we're using f uh, the aperture 1.1 here. The lower the f stop value the larger the bokeh balls because the bokeh is the it's the light source blurring out and it's just it's like when you squint and you, you look at a light source and you squint it sort of blows up and becomes kind of large and I'm doing it right now and you can't see me doing it and I feel like an absolute lunatic but you know what I mean that as you squint uh, the light kind of expands and explodes and becomes larger it's kind of like that even though the average never, never mind and never mind you know what I mean and that's how you create bokeh and is, is it weird how excited I am about bokeh. I think it is. I think it is. I think I need to readdress my priorities in life and decide uh, where, what I'm doing with myself. Anyway, anyway, that'll do for now. Hopefully that was useful for a couple of people <laughs> or, or more than a couple of people. That would be nice. But that's how you create bokeh balls and inventor. Like a pro. Like a boss. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.